This is just a quick question, but um, do you think that with the the Section 5 weight revision that the um, that the government agencies are going to be <laughs> agree more on w what they mean? Because I felt that different agencies had different requirements. I know like HHS had their own requirements. I mean, Axe Tool even has an HHS, or not, I, I don't know if it's Axe Tool, but somebody even has an HHS. Um, you know, these are their requirements. Do you think this is going to be more, it'll be more, they're gonna agree more? Uh, can, <laughs> I, can I answer that for one? I'm absolutely. Uh, the, see, the problem was is that people made their own because it, it, the initial standard, as, as, as well as, as everyone tried, you know, the lessons learned over time, right? Do we include email or do we not? Some agencies said yeah, others said no. There was no clarity. And the Access Board this time tried to go to great lengths to provide the clarity in all the areas that ended up being gray because we had to jump through hoops as time went by um, and new technologies came online to be able to justify I remember I worked for a, a USCIS at a period of time, and the, the um, Section 5 coordinator there was using one of the telecommunications requirements to say that all pro that products needed to be, uh, or systems needed to be accessible from end to end, which was, it's a piece of the, the 255, and she used that as the primary uh, rationale, and it wasn't you know, it, well, we just had to stretch it and do all kinds of crazy things to it to make it fit today's technologies or even technologies 10 years ago. Um, that I don't think that's going to be the case this time, in my opinion, as an implementer. Um, but what, uh, what do others think? Well, I mean, I think that's a great point that the fact that WOCAG 2.0 is technology agnostic, the fact that it is thinking about the future because technologies, when I was first getting into the web, Hot Dog was the, I think, editor of choice or some weird such name. And, um, you know, we were in early days of HTML. JavaScript was used for mostly client side validation, but now JavaScript rules the web, right? And we did not expect that with the 508 standard. I think with the revised 508 standard, hopefully all agencies will have that objective test criteria, right? I, I think the other thing we want to take into account is that what I talk about when I yeah, first talk about the refresh okay. is how awesome it is because a refresh is WCAG on steroids, right? Section 508 is not websites. It's, uh, it's the IT uh, infrastructure of the federal government. It's so much more. And so it takes, if you're going to build software that is an authoring tool, well, it needs to meet the WCAG requirements except for some four. And then it needs, needs to meet the authoring <coughs> tool pieces as well. Same thing for web, except for that you meet all of WCAG and then you meet the four authoring tools if the tool that you're building uh, for the web has an authoring component. So, um, you know, the Access Board did a bang up job. Maybe it took a while, but damn it, they did a great job. <laughs> And I, and I think that, pe I, I know that people were impatient and so on, but again, a small group of people did a really great job. Um, and, uh, and, and the feedback that people gave made the difference. And that's true of the standard. The standard was, is, and continues to be uh, so valuable and considered by the W3C to be its strongest standard, period. So it's got HTML, CSS, all these others. WCAG is its strongest standard because it's, it's lasted the test of time and it had so much feedback built in and consensus around the items that were chosen. Can I, well, can I just, when you were using HHS as an example, what in particular? Sorry, hang on. Thanks. One small thing is um, with, with the contrast and con and, and, and even right. even large text has to meet has to meet the four the four whatever uh, points. Right, right. But but with HHS, the requirements were all text had to meet that. Yeah, and and um, the HHS requirements um, are getting revised now um, with respect to internal publications and whatever is published on our website. Um, the, it, many agencies do it this way. It's the communications organization within HHS that's in charge of the website. And they were 
um, ish, they were um, using operational requirements that w included Section 508 and some of their communication style requirements. And it's caused a lot of confusion. And so they're now separating those two. So at least people know what's a 508 requirement and then what's something that they require because they can require whatever they want for a website um, that isn't just about accessibility, but it's about how the, how the information is presented. Actually, um, such a great point because yeah. if you take a style guide and you mix conformance requirements of 508 and then put your best practices, right? in there that can be very confusing to the community but i think if you t even if you want to combine the two in a style guide uh, debbie can you just delineate the two well sure so long as you don't use color by itself right you need to do that <laughs> um and i think you know we see this a lot where government does this a lot where they issue things that make sense from their perspective but it doesn't make sense from the perspective of the people who are gonna be interacting with it or using it mm. in terms of the categories that are used, the acronyms that are used, the ways of um, explaining what it's all about. Um, because if you're inside government, and most of us are, it's difficult enough to get people from one unit to understand what people from another unit are doing and so we spend our time explaining things to ourselves and have a difficult time putting ourselves in the shoes of an audience that has no idea what we're talking about. So, Can we stay on this topic just two more minutes or unless your question is, is, is still on the, no, okay. So b before we sw switch uh, topics then, you know, so uh, here, here's an example with the HHS 508 requirements for PDFs. For, first off, the part of the problem was in you know 2000, we didn't have requirements for what made it an accessible PDF. The Access Board and GSA were very clear that PDFs were covered. You know, PDFs on your website at least were covered by the original 508 standards. But then you go and try and apply the 508 standards because they came out of WCAG 1. They were so HTML specific, they really did not work at all well. And we've been We've been in that gap for you know for t 15 years you know so that you know it's a long time and we had very progressive agencies like HHS that says okay we're tired of waiting for the Access Board we're going to tell the world what we expect when we get PDFs so it was great they really provided a lot of leadership there but um, to Debbie's point about s mixing styles with um, other requirements one example is the HHH PDF requirements which they call 508 requirements says that your file names shall not have spaces in them. You know, that, that's a, a good rule for a, a document that's going to be posted on the web, but it's it's not a 508 requirement. It's not in WCAG 2.0, uh, it, it, you know, but they for they had they had reasons to call it 508 requirements because people were paying attention to 508 requirements and they weren't rec paying attention maybe to, to style guide requirements. But, but you know, so, so that, that does happen. And, and, and even with the revised 508 standards, that's still a minimal floor and agencies are absolutely empowered to go above and beyond that. So with the original standards and I imagine with the revised standards, some agencies will have specific requirements for compatibility with the assistive technology that they have deployed in their, in, by users, so that's a, a re very reasonable thing to have in your your work statement. Um, sometimes they'll call that a 508 requirement. They can call it a 508 requirement if they want, you know. But it's it, that's compatibility with particular version of JAWS is not in the 508. It's not in WCAG. So I just want to draw that clarity out a little. 